Okay, here's the drill. Middle cop mailbag time. Very, very easy to get involved. Here's what you do. At John Middlecoff. At John Middlecoff is the Instagram. DMs wide open. Fire on it. And get your question answered on the show. We have a ton. So I'm, if I miss you, I, I don't mean to. I'm not avoiding anybody. It's just difficult. I'm a Charger fan. So I'm very excited about this Harbaugh Chargers history uh, news. However, given the Chargers history, I am worried this could be an Urban Meyer situation where a high-profile college coach goes to the NFL with big expectations and fails miserably. Do you see any similarities in the situation? Is it completely different? I think it's completely different. When Urban Meyer was hired in Jacksonville, he had never spent one day in the National Football League as a player or as a coach. He had only coached in college football. Jim Harbaugh played 15 years as a player, coached four as a coach with a lot of success, and whose brother, which I would say is pretty clear, John and Jack Harbaugh, his father, are like his best friends in life. People he relies on most personally and professionally. It's weird because they're, their family is all, their family business. It's all intertwined. Har- Jim Harbaugh knows the NFL very well. He's basically been running an NFL program since leaving the 49ers. And then he brings over a general manager who he knows through his brother. Urban Meyer and Trent Baalke, like, give me a break. That was never going to work. But Urban, like, did not know the pros. Never coached. Had never had a team. Now, he, I'm sure, cheated his ass off at Florida and Ohio State. But back then, you're talking brown bags of hundreds of thousands of dollars. You get to the pros, even if you have a bad team like Jacksonville, you still got guys making five to $15 million. So you start screaming at a guy making $12 million when I don't think you know what you're doing. And especially if you've like signed me in free agency from the Steelers or the Rams, or like I've been around a good coach. I can't take you seriously. Jim Harbaugh has immediate NFL credibility. He's been to a Super Bowl as a head coach. He's also like, the Vrabel element of like, I've played in the NFL. I've been hurt. I, I've i been cut. Like I, I can relate to guys on the team. And then my brothers, like, I, I don't think there's any similarities beside they both have a whistle around their neck. I actually don't think there could be any farther a gap between the differences of the two guys, which is ironic because they both were kind of rivals, right? When he, Ohio State and Michigan, and they hated each other. But I I could now Urban Meyer, better college coach, right? Over his tenure than Jim, even though Jim finally won that championship. Now, Urban to me is one of the best college coaches I've ever seen. But Jim's one of the rare, unique guys in college football who can do it both. Steve Spurrier got to the NFL, failed, right? Barry Switzer laughed out of town eventually. The Jimmy Johnsons and Pete Carroll's are rare. And I, I put Jim in that category. Longtime listener from Canada. Absolutely love your insight. God, I've gotten a lot of nice people in these DMs. My question is, do you think that Canada will ever get an NFL team? It seems like the other major sports have a Canadian team. The NBA, the NHL, Major League Baseball. Also, any tips to growing as a sports content creator? I remember, was it several years ago when the Bills... Maybe it was before they were sold, the Polygulas, uh, the talk about, you know, going to Canada. It doesn't feel like it's going to happen. So as of right now, I would say no. But I, I, I'd be, I, I'm not high on the list of people that feel super dialed in when it comes to, uh, when it comes to playing in Canada, a team expansion in Canada. I, 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 I would say no. So I don't know what else to say beside it doesn't feel likely feels like, uh, you know, England, the kind of that region, if they were to expand, but I, I don't know if expansion's really on the horizon. Again, I, I might be the wrong person to ask on this. Uh, I, I don't know. I, that's that, that feels part of the, and I love the business of the NFL. It doesn't feel like expansion talks, rocking and rolling. Now I'm recording this before old Raj talk. So who knows? Maybe I'm, 
out of the loop. Maybe I'm naive. Maybe I'm ignorant. But uh, when it comes to content creation, I think the best thing you can do early is just be relentless. Every day, do stuff. And obviously, if you work, you know, a normal person job, do it in the morning, do it at night. Uh, but but I would be consistently peppering things out there. Put it on YouTube, put it on your podcast feed, put it on your Instagram. You, you just got to just keep throwing. You just got to keep throwing. Hey, John, what's up? Fan of the pod. Was wondering if you have any Hebrew in your ethnic background. Looks like you may be German instead, though. Yeah, I think I'm uh, no Hebrew. I, I We always thought German, Swiss. Uh, my mom and brother are more dialed in on that than me. I used to always tell people I was Italian. I actually lied to my girlfriend like a couple years ago because I always kind of wanted to be Italian. Uh, maybe I've just always been a sucker for the mob movies. But yeah, I think it's I think it's majority German. To go to a bat mitzvah one time. Bar mitzvah, actually, not bat mitzvah. And it was hard. I mean, I had a lot of respect. It was like, he. I remember him training, my buddy of mine growing up, going to that class to learn how to read uh, for the ceremony in Hebrew. It was impressive. Been listening for about eight months and loved the pot. I'm a Saints fan and wanted to ask what you would do if you were in charge of the operation. I hated the car trade. It wasn't a trade, but it was a free agent acquisition, but I hear you. And would have blown it up. After Peyton left, I wanted to like Dennis Allen, especially knowing success is not always instantaneous in the NFL. But his post-game comments against the Falcons really rubbed me wrong, especially since they're our rivals. Wanted to gauge your thoughts. I think the moment they signed Derek to a relatively, uh, I would say, lucrative deal, not crazy money, but not one of those like, oh, just one year, $12 million. I mean, he... He's, Derek made a lot of money in his career is that you were kind of just, you, you hopped in the boat with Dennis Allen and Derek Carr and they were getting two years. If it didn't completely implode, which it didn't last year. Now they're hiring. It looks like Kubiak, uh, you know, Clint Kubiak, who is Gary Kubiak's son, who's a Shanahan guy. Obviously, the Kubiaks of Shanahan's are all Mike Shanahan guys because Kubiak played for Mike way back in the day and then worked for him, and they all run the same thing. So maybe Derek, and I always thought he would flourish <clears throat> in the in the uh, Shanahan offense. It's much more quarterback-friendly than to ask Derek to kind of carry your team, uh, which he has tried to do at times with the Raiders and this year and had not much success. Definitely played better toward the end of the season but I, I just, I don't know. I, I'm not going to pick you guys to make the playoffs next year. Hard for me to have faith in, in your operation. Um, I, I think Dennis Dennis's comments at the end, I'm with you. Even if you were mad at Jameis, like you told Jameis to victory formation, kneel it, and he overrode you and got the touchdown. I don't think it's something you kiss the ass of a guy who's about to get fired. A guy who's not going to make it. The guy didn't make it till midnight. Think about that. He didn't make it till midnight. And you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. This is this is professional football. It's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Jameis shouldn't have done that, even if you're mad at him. Because I understand being mad at him behind closed doors. It's like, fuck you, Arthur Smith. Shut up. Pack up your stuff and go to Pittsburgh, buddy. I'm with you. That was one of the most embarrassing moments of the NFL. It, it really was. The Saints were like, we didn't mean to do that. We told Jameis, like, shut, this is, what are we talking about? This isn't high school football. And I've gotten people like, well, they were in victory formation. It's unfair. Give me a break. Everyone's cashing big ass checks. When there's time left on the clock, I don't care what the score is. You better have your chin strap buckled. <laughs> I, th this is, there are no life lessons being taught. This is a big money, billion dollar business where you either win or you lose. And I, I have zero, and I mean zero, empathy, sympathy for any of the Falcons like bitching and moaning. I also thought that Dennis Allen did not need to say a peep publicly. D handle that with Jameis. Do not tell the other team you apologize. There's no such thing as running up the score in professional sports. It does not exist. This is entertainment. 
And this, this ain't, we go to peewee football, uh, JV football, and high school football for life lessons. Power five now ain't about life lessons as much anymore. Transactional business, I pay you, you play well, or I cut you or you transfer. So, yeah, I'm, I, I, I can't ever look at Dennis Allen the same. Now, I wasn't a big believer before. Uh, somehow I convinced myself that they were going to win the division. I, I picked them and then regretted that pretty early in the season. Really enjoy the listen. If Brock Purdy and the 49ers lose this Super Bowl, is there any way Purdy will ever overcome the last pick in the draft? This guy only wins because of the talent around him narrative. I don't think it matters what happens. I think Purdy could have an incredible game, throw four or five touchdowns, win the Super Bowl MVP, and the Niners win the first Super Bowl in 25 years. I think they could win and he play shitty. I think they could lose and he play well, or they could lose and he play shitty. And the and the conversation, he is going to be one of the most polarizing quarterbacks next year, no matter what. It will not slow down. It will accelerate if he plays bad and they lose. I think it will not accelerate as fast, but still be a major conversation if he plays not well or average and they win. I even think if he plays well and they win, and he wins a Super Bowl MVP, people will not wrap their arms around him and embrace him. I also think we have to put it in context. Like, would anyone in the NFL take Brock Purdy over, like, the elite guys? No. So what are we arguing? I, I, I think we've lost touch with the argument here. He was, the, he was the last pick in the draft who just threw 30-plus touchdowns and has been a starter now for a year and a half on one of the best teams in football. It's an incredible story. It's like, well, Patrick, he's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not Josh Allen. He is not Lamar Jackson. He doesn't have those guys' physical talents. He is not as physically gifted. Just like this. Now, I'm not comparing him to Drew Brees. He's got a long way to maintain that. Drew Brees was never Aaron Rodgers or Peyton Manning. That was not the case. He was a short pocket quarterback who, you know, was incredibly accurate. Average athlete as the years went on. Better athlete when he was younger. But like anyone, and I've gotten arguments with people like, comparing him to Aaron Rodgers. Like, no, he's not. He couldn't hold Aaron Rodgers' jock. <laughs> There's not one general manager in the NFL when they were both 28 years old that would have taken Drew Brees, and that includes Sean Payton over Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady in a different universe. So it's like, what are we comparing? Doesn't mean Drew Brees like, Top 20 quarterback, maybe, of all time. So I, I just think sometimes we argue to argue. Like, Brock Purdy's the last pick in the draft, and he fucking lapped every quarterback in that draft. Now, Trevor, he was better than Trevor Lawrence this year, but, like, that's the only quarterback. Like, that was the year before, all those guys that went in the top 15. Mac Jones, who Kyle Shanahan loved, couldn't dream of being as good as Brock Purdy. Trey Lance, he couldn't beat him out in practice. Fields can't throw from the pocket. Zach Wilson, I mean, his name is Zach Wilson. I mean, look at all these quarterbacks. It's it's crazy that this guy, if Trey Lance or Zach Wilson was doing what Brock Purdy was doing, and this is just shows you the power of a draft pick, you'd be like, holy shit. They found it. What a pick. They nailed it. But it's like, no, this guy can't be this good. Little Brock Purdy with that little pea shooter arm. Oh, fake. No chance. Like I told Colin, I would have had, I knew right away, and I was going to these practices a lot when it was clear. I don't know. They they liked the guy. They love telling you, like, great guy. Yeah, we get it. This is not good guy, bad guy. Can you play or not? That's That's all we're talking. This is professional football, not professional be a good guy. You, right, and I, I just remember, like, I don't know if I, I don't think these star players in the Niners are vibing with old Trey Lance. I don't think they think he's any good. I don't think they think he's any good. And then he shattered his leg against the Seattle Seahawks. Jimmy Garoppolo came in, and they basically carried off the, off the field. I knew right away. I'm like, yeah, they think he fucking stinks. Now I don't think even they knew that Brock Purdy was that good, but I remember then Brock started really running the scout team. And Fred Warner was like, this guy was making plays against us. And Fred really bought in. And then he began starting. And you never know until a guy plays. And it was clear right away that the little guy could play. 
Now, is he going to go, you know, what, when I'm comparing Drew Brees to Aaron Rodgers, I mean, we're talking about Hall of Famers. Like, is Brock Purdy going to have a 10-year career of playing at a high level? I wouldn't bet my uh, 401k on it. I, I wouldn't bet $50,000 on it. But is it possible? 100%. Right? Is Is he had one of the craziest, most incredible starts to a career for a late-round pick we've ever seen? Yes. Not debatable. Now, he doesn't have the physical attributes. Like, Russell was a better athlete, and he had a stronger arm. But people forget, after year two, I think Russell won the Super Bowl in his second year. Like, Russell was not viewed as some top 10 quarterback. You talk about game manager. It just comes with the territory. We're going to call you a game manager when you get drafted in the mid to late rounds on a good team. Because, like, we just judge all these guys that get drafted high. It's way harder for them, I guess. I don't know. Situations matter. Question for the mailbag. Love the pod. Take the 18 Alabama championship team loaded with offense. Tua, Josh Jacobs, Judy, Waddle, Devontae. Defensive players such as Quinn and Williams, Rashawn Evans, McKinney, Sertain, uh, Trayvon Diggs. People tend to act like players enter a Captain American upgrade machine once they enter the league, but there's a reason rookies are drafted to replace pros. I don't know where, what do you think of the matchup between a historically good college team like 18 Alabama versus 19 LSU and the Panthers would look like? <laughs> this, I, I've always, you know, the media hates this. They're like, how could you ever? This is pros versus fucking amateurs. It's like, yeah, I've been watching the pro game long enough. Like, If you're just a bad pro team, like who's like Washington this year, like the Washington football team, commanders, Redskins, whatever the hell they're going to be called. They're beating every college team, like especially before they trade Chase Young, Sweat, like they would, they would shove you around. And then there are times when you're like watching the Sam Hinkie Sixers or you're watching you know, Carolina's got some high-end talent, but there have been some hideous NFL teams. And you're like, yeah, they're starting a lot of practice squad guys. So when you look at the LSU or 19 team, you know, Bama team, when you could combine them, you're like, they have, let's just say, let's just pick a number. 16 of their 22 starters aren't just like in the pros, like legit starting impact players. And all those guys would start for the Panthers. And I, I'm just using them as an example. So I, I think we could find times in history to make the argument that, like, I don't know, man. Like last year, the Bears, for example. Like, that Bears team is better. Like, they're going to beat some teams. But I, I think, I, I hear you. I think we just, it, it's an argument that people are like, no chance. It's like, well, you know, in, in basketball, for example. Well, Sam Hinkie was rolling out guys that wouldn't make the team for half the people in the NBA. And then you're like, Kentucky has five guys that are going to get drafted in the top 30, and two of them are all-stars or Duke or whatever. I, I always hate that argument that like, yeah, we can entertain it. Who, who would you take also? Like Saban and company against those village idiots at coaches. Problem is you'll never see it, but I, I liked it. Uh, I like where you ended up going with that question. Big fan. The pr with the prospect of getting Caleb Williams, could we see Bill to the Bears or even Mike Brable to the Bears after the draft? No, I, I think the moment, I, I think you're just seeing this coach, at least coach till midseason, depending if it you know falls off the rails, which I keep getting back to seems crazy. It, it really does. You had the opportunity to reset your franchise. Even if you, I, I, I understand not wanting Belichick. He's 72, costs $20 million a year. He's, you know, he can be kind of edgy, <laughs> not big on listening to people. But like getting Mike Vrabel, who I'm pretty sure Mike Vrabel is like under 50, who could have been packaged, who was available at the time with Arthur Smith. You don't have to worry about Arthur Smith, you know, if, if he makes your quarterback a star, getting hired in the next couple of years. It was so ugly in Atlanta. How would you not want to do that? And I'll tell you how they don't want to do that. Their organization is cheap. 
They have a mom and pop shop. I've known coaches. I've known scouts that work there. It's a mom and pop operation. Any organization worth their salt would have at minimum fired the coach. Now, I understand you got Kevin Warren, who's got the classic, like, I want to do the stadium, but I also want credit for football. You got Ryan Poles, who might be good, you know, kind of in no man's land. I know he he tries to be buddies with Eberflus. As a general manager, you're only as good as your head coach. Like, Brett Veach, John Lynch, Les Snead, John Schneider for years, they'd be the first to tell you, like, ha- having a high-end head coach makes you look a lot better. I, I don't care how good you are as a personnel guy. If your coach sucks, you're going to suck. So, Ryan Poles, you might be the next Bill Polian. I, I, I think that you are so limited with that guy as your head coach. I click on your videos every morning on my drive to work. Which AFC young quarterback do you see breaking through and getting a ring first and really start rivaling the Chiefs? Like Peyton did uh, and Big Ben Steelers did. Seems like all these great young AFC quarterbacks will get a shot at the Chiefs. We've, I mean, we've seen them all. We've seen Josh Allen lose every big game. We've seen Lamar just got punked. So I would choose Josh Allen. Because we've seen him, we saw Lamar. I mean, he was overwhelmed. Like that, that was that was an embarrassing moment for the franchise. Like that, that's one where you don't. I don't look at the Ravens quite the same. I, I, I'm sorry. Like I'm betting against you in the big game next time. <laughs> that's just. And I and I kicking myself. My mother called me unloyal to Andy for betting against him. It was. It's not even. I'm this huge Lamar believer, but it's like God. Their team so stacked. The Chiefs on the road like this. That Bills team was so decimated. I just thought the Ravens would win like 24 to 17 or something. I was like, no, they got fucking worked. So I'm not picking them. They just lost their star defensive coordinator. I, uh, I'm i going to stick with the Bills. But they got a lot of question marks. I mean, they got cap issues. They got older players. You're going to trade Diggs who, listen, we can nitpick him all you want. He's by far their best receiver. So... Josh Allen, to me, I don't even think it's arguable, is the second-best quarterback in the league. And I, I think there's a gap. And I, Lamar's got a second MVP. If I had to beat Patrick Mahomes and my teams were all the same, I am taking Josh Allen seven days a week and 15 times on Sunday over every quarterback in the NFL not named Patrick Mahomes. And if I, if I have to play against Patrick Mahomes, how can we even argue it at this point? Like, whenever I see the, after the Bills lost and I saw everyone shitting on Josh Allen, it's like, are, are we watching the same fucking sport? What, what are we talking about? Did you guys not just watch him go toe-to-toe? Well, he missed a pass in the second half. Like, yeah, he, he may, he's not a perfect player. He's not, I don't know, Patrick Mahomes. But he's better than every other guy who's making $250 million. Who would you want right now? Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen. Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. Josh Allen, Justin Herbert. What are we even talking about? He's been the only guy, really, beside Brady, that you look and got. He's going toe to toe with Patrick. All these other guys wilt, look like shit. So I, I, I to me, it's got to be the Bills because they got the they got the one player who is physically better than Patrick. Now Patrick's a better player, but like unfazed by the cold unfazed by the moment, has played well in Arrowhead. Now, I know Burrow beat him, too. He's People, Cincinnati fans, like, what about Joe Burrow? It's like, well, stop missing the season. I won't forget about you. You're like out of sight, out of mind. But Joe Burrow's a guy I forgot about. I, I would throw he, he, him, and I would understand people are pissed off right now if they're a Bengal fan because I say they, I, I forget about him. But it's like he, he just gets injured. So my fault. I, I apologize. Burrow's... Big time player beat Mahomes, but you got to be healthy, right? I, I watched him eviscerate the 49ers, then he gets hurt the next week. I'm a Falcons fan, and I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are regarding the NFL draft. Should the Falcons trade up and draft Caleb Williams? Trade for Fields? I'm not a big trade for Fields guy. Like, I'm going to trade for Justin Fields and give you, let's say, a third round pick and get a guy on the fourth year of his contract. Do I have to pick up his fifth year option? And get a guy that I don't know can function from within the pocket. Incredible athlete. Can make some awesome highlight plays. 
can I win football games with this guy as my starting quarterback at a high level? Now, relative to your situation, he's better than any quarterback you have. So it's a upgrade. But like, what am I doing when I trade an asset for him? I'm making him my quarterback for a year and then probably looking to upgrade again. Because you're not going to give this guy a $100 million contract. And who knows? Maybe he shocks everybody and he starts dealing from within the pocket. But right now, right now, the... uh, Contracts factor in, man. They really do. So I, I, I think, uh, who's your coach, Raheem Morris? He just brought uh, Zach Robinson, who's a McVay guy. I think that, you know, Shanahan was not a big fan of Justin Fields. I, I don't really know if he's a fit in the offense. Long-time listener. I know you said you don't watch the NBA. Few people do anymore. But I think the quality of the product is really good. Every team seems to have a superstar player. Parity has arguably never been better. What does the NBA need to do to gain the audience it had with Michael Jordan? I couldn't disagree more. I think there have never been more physically gifted guys. Like just the pure talent of the athletes, of their skill level. But I think the league has never been worse. When I was a kid, teams were good. This This is not tennis or golf. This is a team sport. How many teams in the NBA are good? Celtics and the Nuggets? It's it's become a mercenary league. So having all these guys jump all over nonstop is great, I guess, for Woj's Twitter account. But for the consumer, like, there's no cohesion with any teams. There's no, like, when I was a kid, like, Gary Payton, Sean Kemp, Patrick Ewing, uh, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen. Right, You just go around the league. Reggie Miller with the Indiana Pacers. Every team had a guy that you knew was going to be there for a long period of time. That does not exist anymore. Steph Curry, Draymond, and Clay are complete outliers. You know, this league is full of Kevin Durant's and Chris Paul's and Russell. The guy's just bouncing everywhere, which, again, they're prerogative to do, but the business is broken. And the teams as a whole have never been worse. It is awful basketball. Now, when you get like Curry and LeBron going at it on a Saturday night, that's entertaining. But the constant you look up and guys are scoring 50 to 70 points, that's an indictment how shitty the teams are. So whenever I hear the pom-pom waving, and listen, you're not I'm not blaming you, of the uh, media that covers the NBA, the league has never been better. Bullshit. <laughs> like th- these teams, this is a team sport. This is not an individual sport. You, to, to have two or three teams, max, that can win the NBA championship because they're the only teams that have been playing together for a while and all these other teams are just kind of a mishmash, you, you can't get good at a team sport if you don't play with each other for a long period of time. And I think that's a huge problem for the NBA, which is not going to get fixed anytime soon because these guys are going to keep moving. And, uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to say, which I can't disagree anymore with people that say the league has never been better and it's really entertaining. I Listen, I, I like – I don't need 75 to 78 scoring games. But when I see constantly guys scoring 60 to 70 points, that's an indictment on the NBA, an indictment on, on the teams that are awful. And I, I think the teams, honestly, have just t- – the depth – of average teams has, has never been as, as long right now. How would you rate the following scenarios for the Super Bowl in terms of likelihood? Chiefs win in a low-scoring game. Chiefs blow out. 49ers win in a shootout. Thanks. It's a good question. Let's start with A. Chiefs win in a low-scoring game. It's kind of what they've done all season long. One games, 19 to 13, 23 to 17. They're very, very comfortable winning that way. When you look at the 49ers, uh, game log, they blew a lot of people out. They are most comfortable having success winning like 40 to 17, 40 to 20, 40 to, you know, 38 to 17, 38 to 15. They won a lot of games. They destroyed people. 
And in the middle of the season, when they got into tight games, they didn't know how to win them. Now, these two playoff games, they were behind, and they usually lose those games, and they found a way to win. So it's is this the new version of this, this comeback kid 49ers? Or are they going to put them in a dome, controlled environment, and look a lot better? Now, the Chiefs defense is one of the better ones in the NFL. I think if the Niners win, they're winning by 10-plus. And if the Chiefs win, it's just one of their classic ugly games and Purdy's just off. I think if the Niners win, they win pretty comfortably. Because that's how they've mainly won all season long. I think if the Chiefs win, they've won like they've won a lot of games. It'll look like the Bills game. It'll even look like the Ravens game. Like it, I'm just acting like they killed the Ravens. I mean, the Ravens only scored 10 points, but it was 17 to 10. <laughs> that was the final score. And a lot of times when you watch this game, you're like, ah, oh, the Chiefs worked them. Well, you can be getting worked. There's a big difference between getting worked and down three scores, like the 49ers were in the second half. You're like, God, you start doing the math and getting worked. And it's like, it's only 17 to seven and we got the ball. So the, the Chiefs, if their offense is not scoring a lot of points, which they haven't really all season, you're kind of still in the game. Now, defense is good. Spagnola against Kyle. I mean, that's a pretty incredible matchup. One of the best defensive coordinators, one of the more aggressive defensive coordinators. Second year quarterback who Spags was talking up. Spags like stuck up for Purdy. Now, it's a hard balance. Like, are they doing it because it's just what you do as a football coach? You kind of, you know, put the guy on a pedestal or they legitimately think he's a stud. I haven't really asked. I bet they think he's pretty good. I mean, how could you not? Would love to hear your answer on the pod. Would it make sense for San Francisco to package their first round pick with Jennings to Carolina for Brian Burns? Is that too much to give up? Or does that make sense for both teams? Carolina gets a first-round pick and a wide receiver for Bryce Young. And San Francisco gets the player to pair opposite with Bosa. Well, I like Jawan Jennings a lot. But he's a role player. So if you're in Carolina's seat, you're not trading me a number one or number two receiver. Like, Jawan Jennings, solid guy, but he's a number three wide receiver. So it's really like I can sign number three wide receivers. Like I don't need to make a trade. I think you look at the number one pick, the 49ers have some needs and they have an expensive team. So if I'm the 49ers, I try to draft either a corner, a pass rusher or an offensive lineman. I would bet a lot of money that they take an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman with that first round pick. The other thing, the 49ers haven't had first-round picks for a couple years because of Trey Lance. So they're spending a lot of money on Bosa. they got to eventually find a replacement for Trent. Uh, They're going to pay Brandon Ayuk. I I just think the 49ers need that first-round pick. Like, in Madden, that move makes a lot of sense. But I I don't think – I never understood why Carolina didn't keep DJ Moore and trade Brian Burns. I think they'd probably regret that one. God, I got a lot of questions. How about them Chiefs? Two things real quick. I live in Gilbert, and when the Suns added that Kings game after the in-season tourney, I used your code on game time and got lower-level tickets for 60 bucks. Congrats. So thank you. I'm an Arizona native and diehard Chiefs fan since 93 because of Joe. That'd be Montana. And this run is absolutely incredible. I don't know how you could ever bet against 15, and I truly think Andy Reid is the greatest coach of all time. Again, love the content. This is a comment. Isn't it crazy that you get and run out of town strong? Like, it had just run its course. But the two best coaches of the last 25 years were both fired by other organizations. Belichick was fired by the Cleveland Browns. The Eagles fired Andy Reid for Chip Kelly. Which, understandable at the time, but let's face it. Like, say that out loud in 2024. Chip Kelly was just begging for an NFL offensive coordinator job. Begging. No one would hire him. Andy Reid is easily, I mean, based on resume, the second best coach of his generation and has a chance if he wins this, like, well, could he have a five-year run to, I don't want to say catch Bill because Bill's got six, but he'd already be halfway there if he wins on Sunday. So it's an incredible time. There's nothing better 
than being a fan of a team and knowing like it doesn't get any better than this. It doesn't happen very often. And then when it when it's over, you just wish it would come back. As a Jets fan, I don't understand the hate NFL fans and the media has for our team. We're somehow ranked seventh in most hated fan bases in the NFL. We're on a 14-year playoff drought in counting. I don't get it. I don't even know. I mean, I know where you're coming from, but I how do we even rank that? We have shown for two seasons that our defense could win us seven games with a basically non-existent, non-existent offense. Surely with Rodgers coming back and seeing the success he has with Hackett, I think at least we can make the playoffs even with our turnstile of an offensive line. I'm not saying we're a Super Bowl contender, but I think the AFC is actually much weaker than we thought. And barring the Chiefs, I think we can play with anybody. I'm going to have to push back on that one. I, I, I've i defended Rodgers over the years when a lot of people kind of nitpick him. I, I think he's one of the best players I've ever seen. You know, I'd... I'd have him in the mix to be a top five quarterback of all time, right? Brady, Montana, Elway, Manning, him. I'd put him above Marino. Uh, I'm putting Rodgers above Steve Young. Uh, Speaking of the last like 30, 40 years, it's hard for me to do the Namus and that kind of crew. But you're getting a 40-year-old Aaron Rodgers off an Achilles injury, who his last full year playing – Looked a little off. So, I I don't know, man. I was someone who was a huge believer. You get Aaron Rodgers, I'm like, I think the Jets are going to win 11, 12 games. Compete with the Bills for the division. I think I picked them because I wanted to do something different. But I I thought the Jets, healthy Rodgers, be a 10-11 win team. I don't know. Because even if he doesn't tear his Achilles, I think he gets injured. He can't move like he once did. Your offensive line is not good. You know what your biggest issue, though, is? Does your coordinator have any clue what he's doing? Any clue what he's doing? That article about the Jets and the Athletic, watching your team, he might just stink, man. Now, you can go, well, him and Rodgers, I don't know. Rodgers played his best football win those MVPs when he kind of gave in to LaFleur and met him in the middle on running that offense. Clearly, the Ford knows knows what he's doing as a play caller. Does Nathaniel hack it? Because I would say sitting here is right now is no. Now I'm with you. The AFC, like the Browns, are going to be way worse. The Sean contract, it might take Harbaugh a year. Like it wouldn't shock me if they're more eight or nine wins than they are eleven, twelve. Uh, the Ravens lost their defensive coordinator. The Burrow health issues. T Higgins. You know the Bills have a lot of roster question marks. Uh, the Dolphins, are they going to pay Tua, their defense, their defensive coordinator, what the hell's going on there? So I, I'm with you. You know, beside the Chiefs, there are a lot of question marks in the AFC. Denver has no quarterback. Uh, what division am I missing? I mean, Jacksonville, ton of questions there. Tennessee stinks. Uh, who made the play? Oh, Houston. I mean, they're they're an intriguing team, but they're, they're probably a couple years away from, you would say, being like a complete team. So, yeah, I mean, I – but Houston might be like third or fourth best team in the AFC next year. It's definitely plausible. It it is. I I just got personnel questions and coaching questions. And when, when they're on the same side of the ball, that's a problem. And Aaron's 40 years old. Like most people are not Tom Brady. I watched Peyton Manning in that Super Bowl. I I watched, I watched him twice live his last year. I love Peyton Manning as a player. It was kind of sad. It really was. I mean, Drew Brees could barely throw the ball. Roethlisberger went from throwing 95 miles an hour to 80. It usually ends bad for guys 38 to 41. It's usually not some swans. Like Tom Brady was still throwing the ball well when he retired. He just didn't really want to get hit anymore. Don't blame him. But it wasn't his arm. And listen, Rodgers' arm is not going to be the problem. But what made him a special player was movement, athleticism, I think those days are over, man. 